G'day guys and welcome back to the channel. Welcome to a different video today. Tonight my tipping video will be out so don't get too worried about that. But in this video I'm going to be speaking about each player from each team in the 2021 season who is having the best season. Based on my opinion so far you could disagree with me and that's fine. Do so in the comments. Hope you guys enjoy this video. Let's get straight into it. The best player for each NRL team to start the 2021 season as we're about to reach halfway. So guys, let's start off with the New Zealand Warriors. Now, with the Warriors, there's a few players you can argue. You could argue Reese Walsh, who is looking fantastic, but only has a couple games of first grade under the belt. But for mine, this player is potentially up there for the buy of the year in 2021. He has been in some outstanding form, a lot of rugby league under his name, but he's just come back and winded the clock. And it is Ben Murdoch Masilla. From the New Zealand Warriors with Adam Fanua Blake out there's been a lot of a leadership role stepped in regards to the four pack and boy has he delivered with 94% tackle efficiency he's missed one game this season he's scored five tries for me Warriors fans your best player of the season has to be Ben Murdoch Masilla the fact that he's gone from the bench into a starting role now shows just how good Ben is now, the Canterbury Bankstown Bulldogs, there's no denying that it's going to be a long season. They're clear favourites at the moment for the Wooden Spoon unless they turn their footy around. But in regards to their best player, they've had a lot of signings over the last few years to reignite what we call the Dogs of War. And this man stands out for me. It's Luke Thompson. He comes from St Helens over in England playing some, some great Super League and not always Super League players make it in the NRL. You could argue the case. There's been a couple of recent with George Williams and Luke Thompson. He only has one try in his 16 NRL games, but I tell you what, what he did to this Canterbury side to be kept scoreless for three straight matches and go into a tough opponent as the Melbourne Storm and for the Dogs to put in a fight like that, he is just outstanding to watch. 91% tackle efficiency, He's ran for over 850 metres this season already. I just think that Luke Thompson is great for the future of Canterbury, and I think he's been the best player for them. The next team is the Sydney Roosters, and look, Sam Walker has had a fantastic season. He's had a lot of games under his belt now, so you could definitely put him in there. He won't return this year, but for me, I've got to give this one to Brett Morris. He almost joined the 300 club. His career is hopefully not over yet. 276 appearances, and boy, did he start the season like some fine wine. 11 tries in seven games, nine missed tackles across the park, 95 tackles made and running over a 1,000 metres. It's a really big effort from Brett Morris. It's a real shame that this is the way that his season has come to an end, as we saw in the Newcastle Knights and Sydney Roosters game. But for me, Brett, you were the best player on the field for the Roosters. If I do one at the end of the season, I can't put Brett in there, obviously. But so far, for me, Brett Morris was just outstanding to watch week in, week out. For the Eels, we have had a few great signings this year. Bryce Cartwright has been fantastic and I believe has more try assists than Dylan Brown this season. Isaiah Papali'i has been fantastic, but I can't go past Reid Marnie. He's now looking like a potential Queensland number nine, or if not, definitely heading to the Origin camp for some experience there. He's got two tries in 10 appearances. He's made 450 tackles this season and averaging about 40 per game. He's fantastic to watch. He's run for over 400 metres. Parramatta boys are putting an effort week in, week out with plenty of points in our attack. But one key factor for me is Reid Marnie. And in my opinion, Reid Marnie has been the best player at the Parramatta Eels in the 2021 season. Now, a team like the Bulldogs that have been struggling to get wins on the board has to be the West Tigers. And for mine, their standout player has been none other than Adam Dewey. 
What an outstanding magic round he had, moving from his preferred position of 5'8 to centre, looking really comfortable, scoring a double. He's been outstanding this season. He scored five tries within nine games in the 2021 season. His defence definitely needs work. He's missed 23 tackles, but as a player, he's been outstanding, running over 100 metres per game on average. I think Adam Dewey, without a doubt, has been the West Tigers' best player. You could argue Luciani Lehelua with his ability to offload and the effort of James Tamo, their new captain. But for me, the West Tigers' heart and soul at the moment is Adam Dewey, and he is to lead this club to great things if they are to play finals football, which I don't believe they will. Losing Mitchell Pearce really hurt the Knights this year, but a revelation for mine after not basically playing in the 2020 season due to injury. Jaden Braley came into that number nine jersey and boy has he turned it into his own. In my opinion, there's a lot of Newcastle players who have stepped up, including new signings, but I think that Jaden Braley has been their best player in my opinion. He's one of the best tacklers and hookers in my opinion in the game with 94.8% tackle efficiency, 517 tackles made, um, his offloads, he's got four offloads as well this season for a, for a hooker to be doing that and still coming up with line break, try assists, kicking, everything. This is a complete player. I think he's got a big future ahead in the NRL and I've had him in my super coach team since the start of the year and he's also got three tries within 10 games. I think Jaden Braley has been a revelation at Newcastle and I can't wait to see him against the Cowboys this week. There's no denying that the Brisbane Broncos have been extremely poor this season, so it was hard to pick a player. But it came between two for me. It came between this man and Jermaine Asako. I think Asako, as an attacking player, has been brilliant. He is, he's just been outstanding to watch. Uh, lots of try assists, lots of tries, big run metres. But the tackle efficiency really needs work. He misses a lot of tackles throughout the game. That's why I've gone with Payne Haas. He's an absolute workhorse who's ran over 1,100 metres this season, made over 250 tackles, 400 post-contact metres, and an average hit-up of 15 per game. He really is a complete player. We've seen him in a Blues jersey, and he's got a big future ahead of him. We still haven't seen that breakout season, I don't think. I still think he's got a lot of potential, even though we did see him win the Rookie of the Year. Payne Haas, for mine, has been the best player for the Brisbane Bronco in a season that they will probably long to forget. The Broncos lost arguably their best player to start the season, but the Titans gained David Fafita, who's been outstanding week in, week out. He's currently serving a two-week suspension. He has over 1,000 run metres, 1,263 to be exact, 24 offload, which works out to be at least four per game. It's fantastic stats, uh, for, for David Fafita this season with nine tries in nine games as well. At one point, he was up there in the Dally M leaderboard, but I think the suspension might come back to bite him. He's definitely the buy of the year for the Titans, and in my opinion, Corey Thompson's had a great season, but nothing can compare to what David Fafita has produced on the field this season. I could honestly make a separate video regarding the Manly Seagulls and their resurgence in 2021 from being at the bottom of the ladder to being in the top eight. But there's no doubt that this man has changed their season. Tom Trevojevic, Turbo as we call him. We all question if he would come back as fit as ever. And honestly, he's up there for the Dally M right now, the way he's playing. He's only played five games in the 2021 season. He's already run over a thousand metres. He's only missed seven tackles. He's made 24 line breaks with 10 try assists. For a fullback to be doing this, you can't argue that he's not a complete player. He's looking like he will be back in a New South Wales Origin jersey this year, which makes him more dangerous than ever. The Manly Seagulls face a very big opposition in the Parramatta Eels this week, and I expect Turbo to be completely at his best. We've seen how good he is this year, with five games under his belt and seven tries. For me, Tom Trevojevic is without a doubt the best player right now in the Manly Warringah Seagulls team. There's no doubt that Valentine Holmes has talent about him, but I really did question his move to the Cowboys and how he'd go after playing in the NFL. He's really come up against himself in a really good season so far. He's played all 10 games, scored two tries. His goal kicking could be better. He has kicked 26 goals. I can't tell you how many out of, but he's only at 70%. 
He's made 44 tackle tackle breaks with six line breaks, five try assists, and over 1,600 run metres. He really is becoming a whole player once more around this Cowboys team, who, like the Seagulls, have been resurgent and looked a lot better lately. I definitely wouldn't compare them to Manly, but I think that Val is a crucial part of this team, and he's having a really great season as well. He's played both fullback and winger, and he's starting to get more comfortable around the North Queensland Cowboys side. Just like Travojevic, one of the stars of our game hasn't gotten to play the full season. I'm talking about the Melbourne Storm's Ryan Pappenhausen. Now Pappenhausen's going to be out again after a real dog shot from Tyrell Fumianu against the Dragons on Sunday. Pappenhausen has had an outstanding start to the season. With eight tries in six appearances, fantastic goal kicking, which has really let the Melbourne Storm down with Cameron Munster at the moment goal kicking. He's only missed three tackles all season and run for over a 1,000 metres. He could easily double that, and he's a potential smokey for the Dally M if he gets some more game time and plenty of points. I think he's arguably been the best player for the Melbourne Storm as they really are starting to stand up as a good attacking team. They've scored 40 points in four consecutive weeks, and I think that may continue this weekend. Pappenhausen is out, but he's definitely been the best player in the 2021 season so far. At the start of the season, I was all over Andrew McCulloch. Then it was Ravalawa. He's becoming a fantastic player too. But for me, in the last 10 rounds, the best player for the St. George Illawarra Dragon, who's currently suspended after playing all eight games, 10 games, sorry, is Tarek Sims. He scored three tries in 10 games, three offloads with 86% tackle efficiency, running an average of over 103 metres per game. He's run over 1,000 metres throughout the season, and for a team that was meant to be struggling, the Dragons have turned up and they're currently sitting in the top eight. They play the Cronulla Sharks this week to decide whether they will remain in the eight for now. And honestly, if Tarek, without Tarek Sims, it's going to be a hard ask. He's been their best player for the season so far, but if that trend will continue, is something we'll have to wait and see. 2021 has shown contract drama at the South Sydney Rabbitohs but their best player without a doubt is heading to the Brisbane Broncos next season. I tried to think of uh, I could put Benji Marshall into this list, but I just don't think he's done enough. He's been outstanding, don't get me wrong, but Adam Reynolds at captain and halfback has been the heart and soul of this club. He's forced five dropouts this season, kicking an average of 340 metres per game. Two offloads, 122 tackle, 400 run metres, He's kicked 40-20. He's kicked the first two-point field goal, for Christ's sake, in the NRL. He's having an outstanding season, and I just think it will continue to get better and better. He's a huge player. He's just so great to watch, and he has been for years. And you can put him here every year for the South Sydney Rabbitohs. They're a really quality side, but I think he's definitely a standout player. And he's going to be a huge loss in the 2022 season. For the Cronulla Sharks, I want to give a really big honourable mention to Will Kennedy. He's had an outstanding season, very consistent player. But I think someone who has revived their career is Matt Moylan. Although the Sharks are currently below a lot of people's expectations, a team that normally makes the top eight, he's been really solid this season. He's only scored one try in his eight appearances. He's forced one dropout, two try assists. He definitely could be doing more. For a Sharks side that's struggling, he's been a standout. His running game has gotten a lot better. He's played both at fullback and off the bench, and I think in that number 14 jersey, he looked quite good as well. He finds himself back in the sixth this week, which is a huge test as Sean Johnson and himself are both playing for new contracts. I I had question marks over Matt Moylan and these rumours that this could be his year, but it really has been so far for the Sharks. There's no denying that the Canberra Raiders are nowhere near where they should be on the ladder. A player who I haven't personally rated for a long time is Ryan Sutton, but I can't disagree that he hasn't been in career best form this season. Ryan Sutton has adapted to the lock position with Joe Tarpany out. He's made nine appearances out of the 10 game. He averages 13 13 runs per game with post-contact metres of over 400 metres this season. His tackle efficiency is outstanding. 300 tackles made this season at 92%. He scored plenty of tries this season as well. Two tries. I know that doesn't seem like a lot, but for a lock forward, it is. 
1,137 running metres, an average of 136 per game. Ryan Sutton, give yourself a round of applause. In this Canberra Raiders side that, in my opinion, has been struggling, you've been an absolute standout. And finally, the ladder-leading Penrith Panthers. And who else but Nathan Cleary? What an outstanding 2020 season Nathan Cleary had, but he has the potential to make 2021 even better. He already has five tries and 45 goals in just nine games. His goal-kicking rate is 86%, and he kicks an average of 500 metres per game. He kicked a 40-20 out of nowhere against Manly. The Manly game for me was where I knew just how good he was. He scored a hat-trick on the weekend. And let me just say, I got to meet Nathan Cleary at the airport the other day. And at the game, he is such a humble bloke in person. He truly is for the fans, just like Angus Crichton, who I spoke about on Instagram. His total running metres is 1,100 metres, and I expect this to just get higher and higher. His tackle efficiency gets higher every week. It's currently 88%. It was 82, I believe, three weeks ago because I checked these things quite regularly. But he's just a complete player and I can't wait to see him back in an Origin jersey because I think he'll be truly at his best this season. He's leading the Dally M leaderboard and there's no denying that he is a clear favourite for the Dally M as well. Anyway, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Something different for you all after the magic round. My NRL round 11 tips will be coming out at 5 p.m., a premiere featuring special guest Sam Revel. Let me know if you disagree in the comments. If there's a player that you think, leave your list below. I'll try and be responsive as well. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. We are on the grind to 3,000 subscribers. Like the video, and I will see you guys next time.